Here's a little bit about graphing cosine. You should have watched the graphing sine video first. Going to go over this pretty quickly. But cosine is a bit different. Um, the wonderful thing is how similar it is to sine. Um, but let's look at cosine. It's a little trickier to do the same kind of cool trick I did with the circle here. Um, because now cosine of an angle, if this is a point on the unit circle and it has a certain angle theta, the cosine is this x coordinate. Okay? And I need to take that. And the thing is, that's an x coordinate. But I don't want to graph that as an x. That's not the input to my function. I want to graph it where the input to the function is the angle and the output is cosine. And so I'm going to have to take this thing and make it vertical. So here's the thing. This length and this length are equal. What I'm doing here is, for example, with a is about pi over 4 now. Um, I'm going to take the cosine of that. That's going to be root 2 over 2. It's about 0.7. There's the cosine. Here was the sine. That's old. We're not doing that now. Here's the cosine, and I'm just going to graph the point with that height. If we look at the table, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and I'm just going to be graphing that point, pi over 4 comma root 2 over 2. And now as that a decreases, we're getting very small angles, and the cosine is very close to 1. If I increase a again, the cosine decreases for a while to pi over 2 where it's 0, and then I lose my cool uh, se segment, unfortunately. It's just the way Sketchpad works. When I get to pi, cosine of pi, that's the, the smallest negative it ever gets, or the most negative it ever gets, minus 1. Notice how, how it's down here. And then it recovers and comes back up. Okay, so let's trace that to get a sense of what's going on. And we get, I don't know if it's exactly a surprise, we don't trace that point. Um, but it's really a great thing. That cosine and sine, they're x and y coordinates. They're different components on the circle. They shouldn't be radically different, but look what happens if I trace it. That should look like a very familiar shape. It's exactly the same wave as the sine function, but just shifted. Instead of starting low or is starting in the middle, like a sine function at zero, it starts high and then goes down, but then basically it has exactly the same kind of repetition. That's a wonderful thing, that the sine and cosine are just shifts of each other. There's really one function here at heart. It's really nice to think of them as two for a lot of purposes, but they have the same kind of shape. They're just shifts of each other. And even if I go negative, it should still work. And we start to see a hint of what I'll do in another video, which is the, um, the even symmetry, the y-axis symmetry of the cosine function. Because when I put in a positive angle, theta, and I look at its x-coordinate, I get the same thing as if I put in the corresponding negative angle and look at its x-coordinate. I've flipped across the, the horizontal axis, and I haven't changed that horizontal distance. That's going to turn into a y-axis symmetry for the cosine. Okay. Again, the tricky thing is that I'm taking a horizontal distance here, shooting it over to the unit circle as an angle, and then taking the horizontal distance here and putting it vertical. It's kind of weird, but it's what you have to do if you want to take this machine in this geometry, which takes an angle and gives you an x-coordinate, and turn it into our usual picture of a graph, which is take a horizontal position and turn it into a vertical for the output of the function. And so that's what the cosine graph looks like, just like a sine wave, but it starts high at 1, then down to the middle, then down, and then again over and over and over repeating. The periodic nature is going to be super important for us as well.